Hello everyone, my name is Andreas Hacke. I'm the Dean of the Graduate School of Architecture, Planning and Preservation here at Columbia University, but I'm also the Director of the Advanced Architectural Design Program. I'm here with CRC Chen, who is the uh, Assistant Director of the uh, AAD Program. Maybe, Ceci, you want to introduce yourself? Hi everyone, welcome um, in joining this session. My name is Xiaoxi and I'm really happy to uh, maybe speak to some of you guys. Uh, I'm going to uh, present the, uh, a little bit what the program basically stands for and how we work uh, and, and also uh, explain a little bit what is that that you will find here, why, why we're so excited about this program and I mean this is a program that is very important for the school is in certain stand is a moment of experimentation and criticality and engagement. Uh, it allows people from uh, brilliant graduates uh, from around the world to come here to New York or people and also a large number of people from New York to basically work together at Columbia exploring what architecture, what is the future and what is the, the most in, uh, uh, the important discussions that are happening in architecture and that are allowing for other forms of practice, uh, other forms of uh, architectural thinking to, to, uh, to transform the world. And let me uh, explain it a little bit more. The Advanced Architectural Design Program is a program that is a, is a post-professional program. You need to have, as you know, a degree to, uh, to, to come here. And that means that basically we don't start from the beginnings. We're not uh, basically focusing on the basis of architecture, but we directly go into what is that that is making architecture evolve and, and innovate and be dissident to what the status quo is and, and become a place for invention and experimentation. And we do that uh, basically through research, practice and pedagogy. Like we, we very intensively consider what's the way of these uh, three realms to, to assemble and to negotiate the, their collaborations and in particularly uh, addressing questions that uh, are unavoidable now, climate, equity, data design, basically everything that is uh, making right now or, or accumulating a big part of the efforts in the world and of course that are unavoidable for all of us. Uh, the AD actually is uh, looking at all these realities that are new or not new, but basically that we have to deal with and that are sort of challenging, like they really reclaim or kind of request from us to, to not only fix things or find solutions, but actually reconsider the way the world is structured and the way our practices are also contributing to those structures. And I'm talking about uh, all these basic realities that are from the front page of our, um, of the, of the newspapers to the, the actual difficult situations that we or we have to frame and we have to to understand and to uh, to position ourselves with regards to uh, when we look more in detail the AD has uh, eight tracks eight lines of work that are very important for us and that you will be basically introduced to uh, each uh, 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 semester is an opportunity to engage deeper into this uh, eight lines of work. The first is the forms of environmental engagement. Uh, the, the, engage, the, the environment is not something that is uh, uh, easy to engage with. I mean, we're all part of it, but in order for our practice to be relevant in it, uh, we have to develop a specific methodologies and use a specific modes of representation uh, that we will be studying and kind of operating in and experimenting with. The second is the uh, accountability of technologies. This is a huge thing. How do we expand uh, the capacity for participation and for, for decision making and for uh, co-evolution uh, through technologies rather than thinking of them as black boxes or of closed systems. The third is the uh, rearticulation of the societal, which is crucial and it's something that is one of the main roles of architecture to, to assemble the social and uh, what is important is what is the way that we can reassemble uh, the societal through new paradigms like the ones of climate or the ones of inequality and addressing and, and confronting inequality or many other big questions that are basically claiming that or, or making it necessary that our societies become something different to what they are now. The third is the material cyclabilities. Materiality not as something that is fixed or that is just 
um, a product, but rather looking at the entire lifespan of materials, what happens before, what happens after, what are the contexts across scales where they are uh, happening and, and what are the labor, the ecosystems, the transportation systems, uh, the, the legal uh, frames in which uh, materiality is enacted socially. And that is a big part, of course, of the evolution of architectural practices now. The, the fifth thing is interspecies relationships, and this is crucial. Uh, uh, it's uh, together with the awareness on ecological thinking and the development of uh, cosmopolitical uh, ideas comes the idea that, uh, that, that the modern notion of the human as the center of the universe is something that, that is challenged now and that we have to move uh, to a very different paradigm in which the alliances between different species, different forms of life uh, become crucial. Uh, and that, of course, is, is very important for architecture. Architecture is expanding in, in those discussions and those uh, new ideas. Uh, and, and the sixth uh, is uh, the, when we think of the city now or the urban life or urbanity, uh, there's no way to separate what happens in the offline realm to what happens in the online realm. And these two dimensions of the urban, it's something that requires, um, requires new, uh, new architectural practices and ideas and techniques and, and references. And we will be looking at that and from the perspective of the technologies that are already operating, but also with the capacity to challenge them, to invent new ones, to be dissident to them. Number seven is the uh, identity and all the questions of uh, decolonization, uh, decolo the, the colonial thinking, uh, and also to confront racism as a fundamental part of our contemporary cultures and politics and the, the making of the civic sphere. Uh, from the bodies uh, to the bodies relating to other bodies, to the way bodies relates, human bodies relates to other forms of life, to landscapes, environments, uh, technologies, um, how to basically address uh, questions of uh, multiculturality, confronting uh, racism, uh, uh, undoing colonialism or decolonizing uh, the context uh, life is enacted through. It's a big part of what we do, and you'll see that this is a very, very uh, needed, fair, but also exciting uh, uh, area to work on. Uh, the geopolitics in the making is it's also very important. The, our world is shaped by uh, border conflicts, uh, by territorial conflicts and, and politics that are neg negotiating and mediating uh, between different actors in the making of territorial realities, uh, displacement, ecosystems that are shared and that require uh, specific ways of, of governance, like the oceans, for instance, and that is, of course, again, a large uh, space for terrain for architecture to expand and to operate. But again, to, to, to be able to operate is not out uh, there as an architect and through architecture, this is not enough with the basic knowledge of architecture. We really need to engage in critical thinking in other forms of architectural design that it's precisely what we will be addressing in the 80. Overall, what we believe is that uh, uh, when we look at an environment like New York, where you will be working and, uh, and, and spending time studying the city and how it operates and its architecture and uh, being in it, uh, you see that the, the notions of criticality, of critical thinking, of uh, politics are very much embedded in the built environment. They're embedded in the windows, in the, in the structures, in the materials that are composing them. They all have a they come from contexts that are critical. They are part of discussions. They are basically uh, containing forms of politics that we will be unpacking as an opportunity to, to operate uh, through design and to enhance the capacity uh, of architectural design to, to be relevant in larger contexts of societies and, and ecosystems. Uh, and we do that uh, through a very intense program, a program that is uh, more than a year, it's a year and a half, and that uh, it's three semesters, uh, but that it's compressed so that it can be uh, also something that, that you can do in one year. And that starts uh, in the summer with this very important first semester where you basically introducing all these uh, lines of work that I was referring to. 
and that uh, it's composed by three courses. Uh, the first is the uh, studio, an advanced studio, where you will basically uh, be working with uh, with practitioners that have a, a also a, a dedication to to uh, research and to to theory, uh, but that basically connect and uh, understand uh, design as a practice that is critical and that requires, uh, let's say, to to uh, for you to position yourself and to 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 understand complex situations and manage them, and that is uh, a big part of the summer. And then you have uh, the second course, which is quite actually exciting, and that it's it's very lively and it's a moment for the entire class to come together to discuss uh, the way architecture operates across scales, and that is a very important course that then uh, breaks down into a smaller groups. So you basically have a moment every Friday where the entire class gets together to discuss architecture, moderated by the, by the director of the program, and then you break down in groups and have all the discussions with, um, with, uh, uh, with experts in research that help you develop your own research and, and writing. So it's a very important moment also to, to learn about uh, kind of high level uh, research and writing. And then we have arguments that is uh, examining the state of this course uh, and, uh, and action uh, uh, across disciplines, but all of them addressing questions that are relevant for architecture. And this is again like a, a, a moment of intensity with the entire group together and then breaking down in small groups. So it's, it's both a moment to build up uh, your, your class as a community that discuss together, but then of course uh, catering to each individual uh, and everyone having the opportunity to develop uh, uh, and enhance your research and, and writing capacity, your critical thinking, your uh, information, uh, and your overall culture about both architectural design and uh, architectural theory and, and criticality. The second semester is very exciting. It's the moment when, the, when you meld with the rest of the school. Uh, and that's a moment of density, and you have a large pool of courses in history and theory and visual and technology electives to choose from, and also an advanced studio with uh, a, a pool of more than 20 studios with people that are incredible, and again, like an opportunity to, to basically interact with people from other programs as well, which is something that makes it very, very exciting. In a final semester, where you have new electives to take uh, uh, across GSAP, and even you can take courses in other parts of the university. And there's uh, a very exciting pool of, of uh, faculty ready for, for, for you to choose and to, to uh, decide what are the trajectories within the program that you want to have. This is the first, uh, going back to the first semester, the summer, basically we make sure that the three uh, structuring courses, advanced studios, arguments, and classicalities are an opportunity for you to explore in depth each of these topics, environmental engagement, decolonizing design, turning technology accountable, materiality, the ones that I was presenting. Uh, and this is an opportunity for you to see this as a, as a design and debor that you work on developing your own research-based design, uh, your, your writing, your capacity to inquire, your discussions with others in arguments and transcalarities, your own specific research about architectural precedents and cases. Uh, the studios is a moment of huge uh, collegiality, I would say, uh, and it's they're incredibly vibrant. It's a great thing to spend time there. You will, you will spend a lot of time, kind of time there, those that are uh, come in, of course, they complement with many other facilities, with a making studio, which I totally encourage you to. It's a very, uh, uh, there's a, an amazing, uh, uh, I would say, um, group of people here, uh, and they spend the entire day there and nights, and they socialize. They, uh, they, they, it's a great place to spend time, but it's also giving you the opportunity to prototype, to, to realize. And we have, of course, always relationships with people from other fields. Columbia is, um, is one of the best supported universities in the world, as you very well know. We have um, uh, centers of science like Lamont Doherty uh, or, the, or, the, or the Earth Institute. 
uh, we have the School of Business, we have the uh, um, Gender Studies Department. So it's, it's a huge variety of experts that you can find across the campus and we, we connect with them all the time and you can easily connect with them. Uh, the, the work that you develop is very much uh, at the center of the school, so your projects are something that you do in conversation with many, many others and, and very, very uh, directly occupying a, a space in the school, so it's your school, you use it in the way you want. Uh, and what is important is that you have all the support to produce your project as an experimental, as an advanced one. Um, and then once you present it, you have a community of people that is permanently discussing, seeing new opportunities, um, and working with you to make sure that your project gets to the to the to its best possible uh, uh, version, and that becomes a tool for you to to build up a voice as an innovative, as a challenging one that can contribute to the evolution of architecture. That's our main goal. We have this argument discussions they are great we bring the most important people uh, producing architectural research and discourse from Laura Poitras for instance a filmmaker that won the Golden Lion the, uh, a few months a few weeks ago uh, Saturn uh, Saturn Saturn former Fantasma Jack Halberstam all these are people Keller Listerlin that have been here uh, and they come here with this to discuss with you and to have conversations and in transcolarities is a moment of huge intensity where the entire class meets uh, in the auditorium and we have long discussions, like uh, I think it's three hours, four hours discussions. I mean, we, we do some breaks, uh, examining uh, more than 300 cases of architecture of the last decades. So each year, each day we maybe discuss in detail, maybe 20 uh, or 30 or more uh, architectural cases and we go to the details what the authors are saying what do they do why is some, one why Hans Holland thought that the bill could be an architecture why uh, uh, earth design considered that architecture needs to operate at the planetary scale what is that that uh, unlike a tonic Philippe Lassau did in plus what is the so we basically go case by case and through the semester we examine more than 300 and we get to see in detail how that works. And of course, then at one point, you break down in small groups and you work basically developing your own research. Uh, and then the second and the third semester, you meld with the entire school and you have this amazing pool of professors from uh, Bernasumi or Mark Weekly or Mabel Wilson or uh, Nayung Wan, like all these very well-known professionals and scholars and thinkers and that have shaped architectural thinking for decades now and that uh, are the school and the, the ones that are changing the, the future of, of design and that the school is uh, really uh, mobilizing for you to, to work with. Uh, sorry, this is going to talk. The kind of work that you will be doing is a work that is uh, in, in, incredibly detailed and uh, very much talking to the, the, the capacity for architecture to change things. You will be developing it in a convincing way through the right uh, representations uh, that allowed you for precision and for collection of data and for uh, making your, your cases very, very convincing, but also to, to uh, to describe possibilities that are now unknown. This is, for instance, a work that Shin He and Shin Hua uh, developed uh, to think the way materiality in New York could be redistributed. So without new mining, without new extraction, without even consumption of, of matters and emissions, the overall uh, energy efficiency of the city could be enhanced. And that's something that, of course, was an amazing project that they ended up uh, developing professionally, or for instance, this project, Christopher uh, Spiracos or Federico Castello Branco and Frank Mandel uh, developed together, uh, what was removing the notion of waste from a city like New York and, and thinking of that the, the, what was waste for humans could become uh, the, the substance of uh, other species. And that is a project that they developed together with people from the law school, people from uh, science uh, schools and engineering, uh, and they work together with them in order to, to make it happen with a high level of detail. And they did these amazing representations of it. 
for many of the projects that you will see and that are uh, quite amazing and that uh, uh, are not just replicating the knowledge that we know at this point, but rather transforming it and giving new opportunities for, for architecture to operate through relevance. This is a phrase by Farah uh, al Corey that did an amazing work on toxicity related to wars in Middle East and what is the way that architecture could create a facility that could um, not only make visible the toxicity that uh, warfare produces, but also um, uh, treating it and, and containing it so that it would not damage those populations of post-conflicted uh, uh, populations and sites. And this is something that, again, like meant a lot of research, representation, amazing inventions, but it then ended up being incredibly influenced in the way that uh, these realities are dealt with. We travel, and we, you will see that in the spring, all the studios travel to different locations. But traveling for us, it's very much doing research. We see here CRC at the center, and myself in, in Iceland, examining some of the glaciers and the evolution of glaciers uh, 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 caused by uh, climate crisis. And we were talking there with scientists, and we were uh, um, um, in working together with uh, members of the Arctic Council. Uh, in, in addressing questions of uh, how climate could be uh, basically could be mitigated adaptation to climate crisis and what is the way that this could be confronted without inequality. You, of course, uh, will be taking courses on visual technology uh, uh, sequences, and that's quite amazing. We have a, an amazing team of people and centers with uh, led by uh, Laura Corgan, one of the First, for you, those that are interested in representation and data and computational design, you probably know already Laura Corgan. She's done uh, uh, most, some of the most important and relevant works on critical computational practices. Uh, and of course, we have the technology sequence that is equally uh, important and exciting. And you will have Lola Benalon that you can already see the podcast that she's doing uh, to have a glimpse of what she, she's working, but she's working with living materials, have an amazing lab uh, on natural material research, and you, you will be part of that, and even you can end up working with her if you want. And, and, and that's uh, all these moments where basically there's tech shops where you can go and see all the different courses and navigate them and be part of them, and these are amazing work that have been developed there. I mean, uh, we could keep and uh, keep going and going and going through all this amazing work that uh, previous your colleagues from previous years have been doing in visual. Um, uh, in, in visuals, they have uh, developed these skills trials that help you uh, know what is the right software for you to use in each case, and and that uh, uh, provide you with tutorials and with the possibility of working with them. Uh, and there's a huge amount of amazing courses that I would encourage you to look at and to take uh, when you're here and to, to take as many as you can. Uh, and of course, we have the present this course, Techniques of the Ultra Real, is quite impressive. That is, is really thinking of the way that uh, the real is produced digitally now or transfer transitional geographies, uh, the, all these part of the visual uh, tech uh, sequences. And uh, we also support you to do, a, through you the time that you're here, to do your own portfolio. And for us, the portfolio is really not, not like a simple professional portfolio. We, we talk about that for you to, to compose a book and a, or a piece of a platform of information that enables you to construct already what's the position that you want to have, what is your basically your profile as you finish your career, what are the relationships that you 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 want to build your your professional career on and that is uh, something that is incredibly exciting and that allows for you to also to design what is what kind of practice and practitioner you or scholar or researcher the big part also of the graduates go to um, to independent practice and innovative practice others want to occupy good positions in in uh, important and relevant uh, practices here in new york or elsewhere Others go into PhD programs. Of, we have a number of, uh, mem of, of students and, and candidates of the PhD program in Princeton or uh, in Columbia that are uh, uh, um, graduates from the AD program every year. And that's 
something that, that I think it's, it's also something that some of you might consider, or there's many people that go into teaching afterwards combined with their individual practice or independent practice or research. And uh, the school also promotes books and there's a large, uh, or very, very important uh, book house, the Columbia Books of Architecture and the city that sits here in the building and that you, you can have conversations with them. They have activities all the time. And that's, and, and of course that's, uh, the, it is full of the, the, the school is a vibrant space where you can really connect to whatever important thing is uh, you want to engage with, like writing, architecture is a big thing, uh, but many other things that you can look at and that we are proudly uh, attracting and nurturing from the school. Uh, and for those that are interested in having a teaching experience, we offer, uh, there's an open call for uh, TA positions for the summer uh, and associate positions that uh, once graduated, you can have an experience uh, contributing to the teaching of the of the advanced studios in the summer. And I, I think that's something very exciting that uh, allowed many people to have first or first or second or third experience on teaching that they, they prolong in other schools or we have a number of deans actually that studied that graduated from the AD program and are occupying important positions across the world now. But what we what is important for us is that all this goes to the question of how through the critical in, the, the, the built environment uh, there's uh, uh, ideologies, possibilities, uh, impossibilities that are enacted, and that is really what we want to look at, uh, and that's something that expands also uh, as student-run uh, initiatives. There's a a, a kind of a very, very exciting large number of groups that you can be part of. Uh, and you can even, I mean, there's all sort of, some of them are people that have shared a, a, a common concern or interest and they get together to organize lectures. In other cases, it's more groups of advocacy. In other uh, cases, it's groups uh, of people with that share a language or a culture and they get together or people that have a particular um, uh, affiliation or that want to work together or, or organize events together and that's the the Columbia groups that are quite amazing the student organizations uh, but but there's others for instance that are you might find very exciting the one of them and I encourage you to take a look and hear their listen to their uh, podcast is the the radio a radio that is produced by by students fully organized by students of the program uh, and it's uh, you can find their their episodes uh, each year there's a new editorial board so when you come here you can apply to be part of the editorial board and and they produce a number of episodes uh, we the school also supports them so that they can do that professionally uh, with the help of a sound this director and an artistic director and with graphic design and with everything that so it's really very exciting i would say and professional actually uh, on radio you can, you can listen to it but what is important is that it's fully run by by the students so that you can you can use that as a platform of independence and gain an independent voice in the school and new york of course is a big part of of the program of the ad I mean, it's, it's really a city that is full of architectural potential, histories, traje trajectories, conflicts. And uh, for us, it's really very important that a big part of the pro program uh, is focusing on, on the city uh, and beyond and their connections, transnational connections across the world. But also that the faculty it's, uh, and the, the school at large is totally imbricated in the networks of the city. You will see that the people that are uh, working in the main museums or firms, architecture firms or companies or NGOs or uh, non-governmental organizations, like basically they, they are here at the school and they are, you will meet them and you will have the opportunity to discuss with them and, and who knows, maybe collaborating with them in the future. Like it's, it's a great opportunity to, to become very silly part of New York in a very intense way. And that's something that of course, uh, comes together with the possibility of uh, that the STEM designation allows uh, for those that don't don't hold the U.S. passport or, or green card 
uh, it, it allows you to, to stay in, in the U.S. and work uh, once you graduate. Uh, and, and that's something that is very important for, for many people uh, that, that um, understand that their AED is an intense moment that they can expand by, by working in New York or in other cities afterwards. And this is where we are, Avery Hall, from where uh, I'm speaking to you, from this actually window here. So uh, I'm so much uh, looking forward to welcome you to, to GSAP.